Good evening. So, who remembers the collapse of 2007-2008 with the banks in America, Europe and the UK? I remember it because at the time I worked in a bank and it was quite a shock. I woke up in the morning, I was getting ready for work and I got a text from a relative asking me if I still had a job. And of course I had no idea what they were talking about. Switched on the TV to see that there had been a massive financial crash. And that's where it all started. So when I arrived at work, we found out that it was really, really bad. Basically, the managers of the banks in the UK had been briefed the night before, about midnight or just after midnight, that the banks here only had either enough cash to pay for everybody's debit card transactions or enough cash to pay the standing orders and direct debits that were due to come out that day. They did not have enough for both. So we were told at that point by our manager, if you need any money out of your account, you'd be best to take it out now because after today, there might not be any money in your account. And at first, I wasn't really quite sure of the seriousness of the situation because I was still very young when I had this job. But as soon as we opened the doors, the queue for the bank was up the street and round the corner. And it was like that all day for days on end. We actually ran out of cash. And the days following that, we had to limit how much we could give out to people. And the ATMs ran out of cash as well because everybody panicked. And everybody came and took out what they could get out of their bank. Because naturally, you don't want to be the last person going there and there's nothing left. So of course this started what people would probably call a bank run. Everybody came and everyone wanted out all of their savings and all of the cash in their current accounts. They did not trust the banks enough to leave it in there. And so this started a domino effect. And what basically happened was the government reassured the public that they would show up the biggest banks, the ones that were what they called too big to fail. But it meant the smaller banks like Northern Rock, they went under. And everybody took their money out of those banks and they brought it to the bigger banks who the government had reassured the public that they would show up. So people were taking checks out of Northern Rock for like 200,000 and things like that. And they were bringing them to other banks to deposit there where the government had told them it was safe. So Northern Rock was lost and quite a few other companies went under at that point as well. Can you imagine going to the bank to take out money for shopping or to pay a bill and you get there and they tell you you can't have any cash because everyone else has been before you and they've took out the maximum limit and we have nothing left. That shocked a lot of people. They just couldn't believe that the bank didn't have their money. It was gone. A few years later, we saw the same situation arise in Cyprus, where they had a financial crisis. The banks closed for seven days and no one had any access to any money. The people who had cash were able to buy things, purchase things and pay for things. And most shops and petrol stations would only accept cash because they had no access to their bank accounts either. The only thing was that cash soon ran out in ATMs. People were going and there was nothing left. And this led to despair, protests, people getting really angry, frustrated. Some people even committing suicide. They lost their life savings, everything they had worked for. So if we fast forward a few years until today and the news that I've seen today appears to be suggesting that we're going to end up in a similar situation as 2007-2008. The Silicon Valley Bank crashed and it seems to have set off another domino effect with another few banks going under as well so far. 
I don't know how this is all going to pan out, but some of it looks very similar to the train wreck that we've seen in 2007 and 2008. I'm not a financial advisor, but I do think it would be prudent to keep some of your cash in the house with you. Obviously not under your mattress, but, you know, keep it safe. Keep enough for a month or two's expenses if you've got it. If you've got savings, don't leave the whole lot in a bank. I don't think it's the best place for your money to be right now. But get a safe place and keep it at home and don't let anybody know that you've got it there. The worst thing would be trying to log into your bank account or going to the ATM or the bank and finding that it's closed, there's no cash there and you have access to nothing. If we are headed for another collapse, it means that you're able to purchase things and pay for things if you need to and you don't have that extra worry hanging over you at a time that will already be very stressful for many people. If you are going to keep some cash, try and keep a variety of notes as well. Not all big notes like 50s and 100s because some places might not have a great deal of change either so you want to have some small notes for these types of situations. Now also, if you are going to be keeping more cash at home, you might want to consider your home security because criminals will know that more people are keeping cash at home, especially if the banks do go down. Uh, maybe getting like a house alarm fitted if you don't have one already. Lock your doors. You'd be surprised how many people just don't lock their doors. Keep your doors and windows locked and maybe fit home security cameras, which are quite a good deterrent a lot of the time as well. Sort of simple things, but have a look into your home security. Another thing to consider might be having some shelf-stable foods at home. If you don't already have a little stock of foods just in case anything goes wrong, then maybe this is a good time to think about it. I mean, it might not just be a bank run or something. It could be, you know, job losses for a lot of people. A lot of companies could fold. We just don't know what's going to happen at this stage. It's always good to be prepared. At the end of the day, the things have a long shelf life. And if nothing happens, the worst you've done is beat inflation, especially if you're buying things that you're going to eat anyway. You will eat them and they'll be used up and you won't have wasted anything. Now, whether this goes badly wrong or not for us, one of the important things that we must remember to do is look after each other and care for each other. We also need to help each other and love each other. But remember that no matter what happens, the most important preparation we can ever have is spiritual preparation. So remember to pray and ask God for the wisdom and the truth to get you through these times and guide you whichever way he wants you to go. Thanks for watching.